All right, so here's a quick uh, tutorial on how to find a trigonometric function by hand. So this is uh, comparing uh, the time and days with how thick ice is on a lake. And with these sort of questions, I'm finding it most easy to focus in on making a cosine curve for the information. You could also find a sine curve by hand or find a sine curve using the graphing calculator commands. But this tutorial is to show you how to create a trigonometric function, we'll use cosine, that will model the real world information that's given in the question. So this is what our target is to come up with values for A, B, C, and D that will satisfy the picture that you see. Uh, there's formulas for each of these variables. A is the amplitude, which is half of the range. And the formula for that would be half the max, the maximum y value, minus the minimum. Uh, we'll figure that out in just a second. For B, B is the frequency, and it's two, pi, it's 2 pi divided by the period. To figure out what C is, it's B times the shift. And then finally, to find out what D is, D is the mid-range. It'd be half the max plus the min or in other words, the average of the max and the min. All right, so to actually find these values for our particular question, one thing we want to do is locate the maximum thickness of ice and the minimum thickness of ice. And go on from there. So for our range, our range would be 44.3 take away 5.2, which would be 39.1, and then we're going to divide that by 2 to find the amplitude. So to figure out the frequency on this one, you have to be a little clever with setting it up, and this is why I made the video. To, um, to think about what a cosine curve looks like, uh, it will start at a high point and end back at a high point. For this particular graph, it's starting at a low point at the minimum and only working its way to the maximum there. So in the data that we have, we're only seeing half of a cosine uh, on display. What you'd have to do is figure out the entire length of that cosine curve to figure out the period. Now for the data that we have right here, the cosine curve is only taking up 42 units on the x-axis. So basically we've got 42 units so far. To show off the entire cosine curve, if there was a full cosine curve, it would take another 42, which means that the entire period would be 84 spaces long. So we get 2 pi over 84 or pi over 42 as our frequency. In terms of figuring out how much this sine curve has shifted over, or this cosine curve has shifted over, you have to concentrate your attention on the maximum point for the graph. Now, a cosine curve typically starts on the y-axis. This one has a high point, though, that takes off from 
this x coordinate here, which is 49. So this cosine curve has shifted over 49 spaces to the right, which is considered a negative shift of 49. So to complete the calculation of C, it would be the value from B that we just got times negative 49. If you simplify that, that reduces to negative 7 sixths pi. And then we're on to this, just the last calculation, figuring out what D is worth. D would be half of the max plus the min, which would be the average of the highest and lowest point. So the highest point was at 44.3. The lowest point was at 5.2 centimeters. So half, half of those added together comes out to be 24.75. Putting it all together, we can build the curve based on those A, B's, C's, and D's. So the final answer would be Y equals 19.55 for the amplitude times the cosine of pi over 42 X minus 7 sixth pi plus 24 and 3 quarters. All right, so here's uh, the official answer from the graphing calculator or graphing calculator app. And you can see that this only um, gives an equation in terms of sine. Uh, and it's interesting to see that the answer is pretty accurate to the same equation you have in terms of getting close to the points that are there um, when you look at it in terms of the scatter plot. Um, but as it turns out, you end up getting about 19.7 for your amplitude. And you just have these decimal approximations instead of having it in terms of pi, which makes it a little bit more clumsy to write out. But altogether, it's equally effective. The only thing is you need a graphing calculator to generate this. And the great thing about working it out by hand is that I did not even use the graphing calculator a single time to come up with the equation. All right, hopefully this was helpful for you, and good luck studying.